The next uh, uh, marker or several markers that you can look at um, on your test would be um, serum uh, calcium, um, phosphorus, uh, chloride, potentially zinc, depending on the type of panel you got. A lot of times zinc's not on there. Um, I know in our comprehensive functional panel, blood panel that, that we offer on drjockers.com, you do get zinc on there. But nonetheless, chloride, um, iron, calcium, phosphorus, these are all um, crucial um, minerals that are absorbed with stomach acid. So you, you've got to have stomach acid for them to actually start to, to get absorbed and, and then taken um, down to the lower digestive tract to really get um, you know, utilized and, and go to work for you. So those are common um, you know, minerals that you'll see um, that are low. And that's another great indicator that, hey, stomach acid is low because we're not even you know, absorbing these. Um, so that's, those are several um, easy mineral markers that you can line up with this pattern. Um, and then um, a decreased alkaline phosphatase. Uh, so this is a, a zinc-dependent enzyme. Um, this is going to be in, in the, uh, associated with uh, liver enzymes as well. But a lot of times when we have um, an alkaline phosphat phosphatase lower than like 75, um, that's another really good indicator that we're, um, we're having a, a low zinc absorption and, um, or consumption and absorption. And we know that we have to have adequate stomach acid to be absorbing the zinc. So that's, that's how this kind of ties in um, in this pattern. And so um, the, the, this whole pattern is, is great to just get a baseline looking at, are my symptoms bloating, gas, heartburn there? And how am I looking with this type of pattern on my blood markers? And this is a great window and clue into um, confirming that there's likely high likelihood of low stomach acid. Yeah, absolutely. And th these are all, again, all, all tests that you can definitely look at on your labs and get an idea of what's going on. So these are key patterns that we're looking at. Now, what's, what's another pattern that you're looking at? Well, let's just jump into H. pylori. So yeah. H. pylori pattern is, is this is, goes hand in hand with low stomach acid. Um, and so this pattern is, um, very, very similar to the low stomach acid pattern um, with an immune component. So I know you've talked at length about H. pylori. A lot of guests yeah. have talked about H. pylori. Um, but just to kind of give a quick overview of H. pylori, it is a gram-negative bacteria. It's rod-shaped. It has a propensity for mo mainly to get uh, the stomach infected. It lives in the stomach mucous membrane lining. It it has a it creates a higher pH uh, environment alkaline environment in the stomach. The stomach needs a super low acidic pH to be optimal uh, for stomach acid production. So that limits the stomach's ability to secrete and release stomach acid. So that's why it is a huge component with many many folks that have low stomach acid. Um, you know, Dr. Jockers has mentioned that link lots of the causal factors that create low stomach acid, but as from a, um, a microbial infection standpoint, H. pylori would be number one um, as far as a microbial component of, of contributing to low stomach acid, which we see quite often um, because honestly, about 50% of H. pylori infection is asymptomatic. So you don't necessarily notice it um, with the sharp pains um, or, or maybe not even, you know, extreme bloating or, or heartburn. But when you're looking at your lab, you can see mineral markers, low nutrient levels. Um, you might start to connect some dots to some other things with low stomach acid. Um, there's a lot of other things you can see with this, but that's in a nutshell, that's H. pylori. And so the pattern that we look at very, very similar. I always kind of, I overlap these. So I look at, like we mentioned the total protein, um, is it decreased? Sometimes the total protein can be this can stay the same. So we're looking at that six point nine or a little bit lower if it's if it's decreased. Increased globulins again because we're talking about liver inflammation, small intestine, um, you know, inflammation to that um, to that lining because undigested proteins are going down there. That creates um, oxidative stress to that really delicate cell lining wall. So increased globulins, uh, increased or decreased bun, as we mentioned. Um, same with the minerals, but um, the, there's an immune component that we'll often see since this is a microbial bacterial infection. 
So we'll, we'll see uh, an increased white blood cell count. So you'll look at your total um, WBC on your, on your blood chem panel. Um, if that's over 7.5 or, or north of that, you start to say, okay, there's a little bit of some up regulation of, of immune cells, white blood cells. Um, we'll often see an increase in neutrophils. Um, if the range is about 40 to 60. So if you're north of 60, um, and, and in particular to this pattern, um, that's something to clue in because neutrophils are um, mainly um, targeting bacteria, bacteria infections, and they are kind of a frontline defense to kind of go in and start to destroy um, foreign and pathogenic bacteria. So that's, that's why neutrophils specifically, as opposed to like lymphocytes, um, are, are important here. And then we have um, normal or even increased monocytes. Um, and, and that would be the range would be um, if you start to go north or over seven, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, starting to get in that range, we see, okay, well, there's an elevation in monocytes. And monocytes are like the Pac-Man, and they're really coming in to go and clean up and, and clear out the dead um, bacteria, dead neutroph you know, dead neutrophils after they're done. It's kind of a recycling, kind of a, you know, um, yeah, Pac-Man's a great analogy to think of. That's mm -hmm. what they're doing. They're cell cleansers and, and cleaning up the debris. So if we see an elevation of those plus the neutrophils and an increase in the white blood cells, um, along with that low HCL pattern, or in this context, the H. pylori pattern, that's a really good indicator as well that we've got some immune, immune activity going on. Um, and as well as the, the low stomach acid. And that's kind of how we can start to distinguish um, maybe there's an H. pylori infection if we just have the blood test alone. Um, but I would say if you have this pattern and you have just when you eat anything and you have extreme like stomach pain, you know, uh, that is a, a very, very clear sign and symptom that it's, it's very high likelihood that H. pylori is, is at work. Um, in yeah, a lot of burping, thing. belching, yep. Yep. reflux, right? A lot of mm -hmm. issues like that. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And and the thing with the H. pylori that's that that really tr triggers this immune response as well is because the immune system recognizes there's something off. There's foreign bacteria going on. It'll send white these white blood cells and neutrophils. It'll send it send it up into the stomach and be released. And a lot of times, what happens if we have we're still eating processed foods, we're highly stressed, we're sedentary, we're not hydrated. Um, you know, it, it, what happens is the immune system is trying to help, but what, what ends up happening is these white blood cells go and they just cannot overtake, uh, they can't get through the, the protective biofilm that the um, H. pylori will make. Um, they end up dying and then, you know, releasing their contents. And the H. pylori will actually feed on the cellular components of the dead white blood cells. Mm -hmm. And then as well as a lot of the, the body will send upregulate like zinc and um, uh, chloride and iodine, some of these nu these nutritive minerals that are needed for the stomach to produce increased uh, stomach acid. But what will happen is the H. pylori will also end up feeding on those and it'll just get strengthened mm -hmm. um, because it, again, as we always talk about, it's a holistic perspective. We want to address all the root causal factors um, while we're addressing stomach acid as, as a major linchpin. Um, but that's so crucial when you have an H. pylori infection. When you see this pattern, you have the symptoms you're talking about. I just wanted to kind of reemphasize that because um, it's, it's, a, it's a whole, you know, total body and lifestyle picture here. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, it creates a vicious cycle of inflammation mm -hmm. in the system, nutrient uh, malabsorption, right. Mm -hmm. And, uh, mm -hmm. just causes a big problem. H. pylori is, and it's a tough one to eliminate as well. You know, we have specific mm -hmm. protocols that we use, but you know, it's a tough one. And about 50% of our society has H. pylori, believe it or not. Right. And so mm -hmm. a lot of people are dealing with it. And a lot of spouses are, you know, in a sense, giving it, you know, back and forth to each other. So it's definitely a big one. We'll see that a lot on labs and that's a good one to really look at. So I'm glad that you went through that. Mm -hmm.